Okay, so it's day two of the show. Uh, and to, for me, day two is technical. So it's all the things that you've put into your yacht once you've made the purchase. Bow thrusters, engines, treatment plants, electrical equipment, AVIT. So let's go and have a look. So this is Fleur. Uh, they make uh, night vision cameras, amongst other things. They make cameras, but they are famous for their night vision cameras. Originally a military uh, solution, they are now very popular on yachts. So you can see here they've got one going. It must have a massive filter on it because obviously it's middle of the daytime. This has got a joystick control on it. Uh, so basically you can see the screen there and I push left camera goes left well you know obvious stuff uh, if I twist it zooms in it zooms out I'm not quite sure why you need one of these on a yacht unless you're looking for someone who fell overboard it's more of a I don't know whether it's really legitimately needed but they do seem to want them now so whatever the customer wants right this is a bridge concept this is supposed to be a conning station on a bridge. I have big reservations about this kind of bridge because one of the things that, that when you ever, whenever you go onto the bridge at night, it has to be completely pitch black because the light destroys the uh, the, uh, the deck and or the deck officer's night vision. So they always want to turn uh, the, the illumination down on the screens. So the screens have to be able to be turned down to zero. Uh, <coughs> Whenever you go on a bridge, you'll see them, they'll stick chewing gum over LED light, little tiny LED lights or screens on phones and stuff like that. The deckhands or the deckies will stick things on them to stop the light from coming out because they say it spoils their night vision. So this bridge, while it looks great here, on, a, on, a, on, a, on an actual yacht at night in the ocean, I, I don't know how that would work. Also, you've got to think about the fact that if you have some sort of power failure, you've got no actual manual controls okay th this, this is a bit more representative of what a modern super yacht bridge looks like now still a lot of digital but also manual controls although it's all fly by wire now anyway so you might be wondering uh, when you go to the toilet on a yacht what happens to the waste so obviously in a, in a house flush the toilet it goes down the drain and away it goes never to be seen again on a yacht you can't do that so what you have to do is you have to store it and Hammond is uh, one of the big companies in in waste storage so basically what will happen is you will go into the bathroom use the bathroom the toilet is like the kind you find on the aircraft the uh, the vacuum system so all of the waste is vacuumed through the pipes into a giant tank. This is one of the, this is one of the uh, pumps that will pump it. So it will store it into a tank. The engineers will look after this. Uh, when the tank gets full, if they're in port, then a lot of the ports have the facilities. So you connect a shore uh, pipe and then you get permission from the, shore, from the port side and you uh, can pump out your waste. Other times, you have to have a truck. If, there's no, if there is no facility and you're not planning on leaving uh, anytime soon, you have to hire a truck to come in, connect to, and then you pump out your waste that way. And then, all, and then the other way is when you go to sea and you're out at sea and you're 12 miles outside international waters, you're in, out 12 miles out or in, in, in international waters, you can then pump out your waste into the sea. And that's why they always say on ships not to put anything down the toilet other than waste product and paper. That bed is stabilized, it's a gyro stabilized bed. So, and I said to the guy that I saw a, a pool table, a gyro stabilized pool table on a cruise ship recently. And he said, yeah, we actually made that. Um, and um, he said there was um, one day on the ship, uh, somebody who was seasick lay on the pool table. and. Um, he felt better afterwards, so then they, they got the idea of, oh, why don't we make a bed? 
So this is the idea, but it's such a great idea because you know, billionaires are always complaining about the weather, like the, like the, as if the captain can just like turn the wind down or something. But this would, uh, mo I think, most owners, if they saw this, if they could get used to it. They'd love it. Great invention. This is uh, Coburn. They make a lot of the antennas you'll see on top of the yachts I've talked about before. And uh, great, they've got uh, an example of what it looks like inside. Okay, so uh, this is uh, another example of a small uh, uh, VSAT or a TVRO dome, uh, what you see on top of the boat, without the dome on it, obviously, antenna. I just wanted to show you how, how, how well balanced they are. So these, these are balanced uh, to such an extreme that you can move it with one finger. And there's no power, obviously. You take one piece off it and it's out of balance. So the idea is that it requires very little power to move it. So you can see, if I move it, I'm, just tu I'm barely touching it. One finger, perfectly balanced. My name is Roger Horner. I'm the Managing Director of E3 Systems. Uh, we are a uh, communications integrator in the, in the super yacht world, maritime world. It's, uh, it's a product developed by Kaimeta in um, Seattle. It's a fantastic revolutionary uh, technology using meta materials. It's not phased array. There is a massive amount of uh, investment behind it. It's a primary investor, the largest investor is Bill Gates. We now have working product on two yachts at this show. We have it on Maltese Falcon and on um, White Rose of Drax. The Kaimeta flat panel using meta materials, obviously to start with aesthetically, it's a fantastic, you don't have to have domes. Reduces the windage, uh, reduces the weight. The panels are 23, just over 23 kilos. On White Rose of Drax at the moment, we have four panels on the boat and the yacht is intending to take the antenna array off and they're gonna drop four and a half to five tons of weight off the top of the boat by removing those domes. They're um, solid state, uh, there is no moving parts, so low cost of ownership. The panels are all then installed flush into, um, into, the, into the yacht superstructure around the Monkey Island. So what does a billionaire do at a yacht show when he's fed up of buying yachts? Maybe he maybe buys himself a private jet? So we've got uh, communications on board between the crew, very important. So radio communications, motor roller is the most common. But these are much more than just two-way radios now. You can actually make phone calls on them. Depending on how the boat sets it up initially, you can make direct phone calls and you can also connect it to the ship's PBX system and make external phone calls, two-way calls. This is a captain's chair. Or a bridge chair. As you can see, it's even got the mouse and the controllers built into the chair, so he doesn't even have to get out of the chair. So I'd say it's definitely for a captain. <laughs> so he can steer the ship from this chair, unbelievably. Okay, so this is a uh, this is representative of most of the uh, systems on board a super yacht. This is what the owner would use when he wants to control pretty much everything in his uh, in his stateroom or in his salon or whatever. So basically, you come in here, uh, obviously turn it off. You wouldn't want to turn it off. So we come in here. He wants to go video on demand. So he goes in here. He'll have an on-screen display. Uh, so we can they can shuffle through up and down um, uh, Apple TV so they'll have all of these things most likely they'll be in a rack somewhere in a rack room which the ETO will look after and he will have nothing in front of him 
except a huge television. It's not just about TV. You can do lights. You can you can do the blinds, uh, lights up, lights down, different settings. Depending on the system they have, the lighting system. They get to have a systems called KNX or Lutron systems. These are types of lighting control systems, and they are connected into Crestron. My name is Daniel, uh, Daniel Kerkhoff, and I work for Crestron. In uh, I'm based in the Netherlands, and uh, due to the fact that a lot of the yachts are obviously built in the Netherlands, I'm very attached to the marine world as well. So therefore, I'm here at uh, the Monaco Yacht Show. Uh, Crestron does uh, audio video distribution and automation system on board of uh, on board of the yachts. Diagram behind you as well, and it's actually showing that everything that has uh, is an electrical system. What we do is we make a nice user interface, so the owner or the guests are uh, capable of controlling the system, getting everything to work in the way that they want with uh, a single user interface and a single press of a button, basically. What we see more and more is that they uh, fed test or factory acceptance test everything already uh, before it actually gets shipped to the, to the shipbuilders. Okay. So everything is already pre-configured, etc. Then it goes on board and the last configurations are done and the ship can be delivered. Obviously, there can be a lot of differences in the kind of channels that you would like to be able to uh, to watch in the guest cabin because maybe once it's uh, it's more the, the Arabic um, stations and the other time it can be more the Russian stations. But also we can say, okay, I want to have, um, I want to watch the football game tonight, for instance, right? And I want to make the football game available in the in the guest cabin. And on the ETO panel, we can then determine that the match is available in the guest cabin, right? right? And now everything that the guest needs to do as soon as it gets to the cabin and he knows that he wants to watch the football, well, there's a very clear button that says, hey, this is how you can watch the football. And it's it's a combination of, of the hardware, of the possibilities that we have hardware-wise, and obviously the right programming done by our partners. So here's an interesting thing. This is a thruster, an electro electrical thruster, like a bow thruster. But well, interestingly, it has no shaft. So the shaft is missing out the middle. So it runs around the rim. The good thing about this is you don't get, one of the things that ships uh, struggle with is prop fouling. Uh, so what happens is a piece of rope in the water, a long piece of rope in the water, the rope gets tangled around the shaft and as it spins, it gets tangled around and bigger and bigger and, and eventually until the shaft stops turning and then uh, basically it stops working. And then to undo that, to, to untangle that, it's a big job, you have to get a diver down. Uh, I was on a world cruise once on a cruise ship and the crew and the, the, sh the ship was actually had to cancel the rest of the world cruise because they were stuck in port so long. Because not from a thruster, but from a propeller. But this technology could be applied to propellers, I would imagine. So you might be wondering why there's water coming out the side of the boat. That is not waste, that is cooling for the engines. So the engines are water cooled. So they pull, it, they pull water in from outside, run it through the engine, and then eject it out of the side like that. And so whenever you see that on the ship, it's not, it's not a lot of people ask me, oh, what are you uh, putting out into the water? It's just water, seawater. So high fog is a water mist fire protection system, as it says there. It's like a traditional sprinkler system that you'd have in a house. However, this is specially designed for a marine application. The reason why it's different to normal is that, is that the amount of pressure that it uses. It uses extremely high pressure uh, to push out water and um, it uses low amounts of water and to suppress the fire. So it fights the fire in three different ways. It, 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 uh, it, it cools the surrounding area, uh, it blocks the radiant heat, and it removes the oxygen from the seat of the fire. So it, it, it's a very effective system, and I don't think I've worked on a ship in 10 years that doesn't have the high fog system. Well, I hope you've enjoyed, or at least found, this look at the technical side of yachting interesting. In the next video, we will look at my favorite part, toys. Okay, so it's day two of the show, uh, and to, for me, day two is technical, 
So it's all the things that you've put into your yacht to make it run better than...